AMX-30 1972 is not just another high-tier medium tank. It's an example when few millimeters difference can give you a significant advantage against opponents. The main round is available as soon as you buy the tank. It's high explosive anti-tank. Interesting thing is that unlike most of other heat rounds at high tiers, this one doesn't use fins to stabilize shell in flight. Instead, rifled barrel makes the round spin, which results in better accuracy, and the warhead inside the round is divided by ball bearings, so it doesn't rotate as much. It helps to maintain high penetration, which otherwise would be wasted in a spinning warhead. That's an interesting fact, but probably there is almost no difference in the game anyway. What you really care about is round's characteristics. And there is nothing unusual. It offers up to 400mm of penetration, which as you would expect from high tier heat projectiles, is enough to penetrate any tank in frontal projection. Of course, tanks with reactive or composite armor can resist it, but most of such vehicles have higher battle ratings, so you won't see them often. Muzzle velocity is exactly 1 km per second, which is ok, and considering that the tank has a rangefinder, you shouldn't have big problems when attacking distant targets. Damage depends on where you hit an opponent. Just like all heat shells, Post-penetration fragments don't spread around the impact point too much, and destroying someone who plays hull down, exposing only part of its turret, will not be an easy task. But as long as you flank, which will allow you to catch opponents in the open, hitting the center of crew compartment will result in one shot quite often. And of course, the bonus advantage of any explosive round Hull breakable vehicles will be destroyed no matter where you hit them. Once again, nothing unusual, it behaves just like all heat rounds. So you must be wondering, especially those of you with insecurities regarding size, isn't this video supposed to be about a few millimeters that change everything? Here it is, 20 mm auto cannon. One of the most useful things that you will rarely find on other vehicles. It's just few millimeters more than usual machine guns, but it's way more useful. Usually you would use machine guns for three things. To remove bushes, to mark opponents, or to attack very soft ground and air targets. While this autocannon can do all these things even better, it will be useful even when fighting heaviest tanks such as mouse. 20 mm rounds have enough power to quickly break enemy guns or tracks, so you will never be defenseless if your main gun is broken. Additionally, half of its rounds are high velocity armor piercing which can penetrate up to 57 mm of armor depending on range. That is enough to destroy most medium tanks when flanking. It's especially helpful in situations when suddenly you end up facing multiple opponents and there is no time to reload the main gun. While autocannon clearly wins against any machine gun, there are few things you should be aware of. All projectiles have tracers, so your fire across the map will give your position away for everyone, just like if you were playing an SPAA. And autocannon is coaxial, which means that it shares the same rotation speed with a main gun, and damaged turret ring will create problems for both of your weapons. While turret ring is intact, you will enjoy its slightly above average rotation speed of 30 degrees per second. That's more than enough for comfortable gameplay. We don't do 360 no scopes in this game anyway. Vertical guidance is also pretty normal from minus 8 to 20 degrees, though it's worth noticing that autocannon can additionally elevate 20 degrees more, so there is nothing that will stop you from acting like SPAA. At least until someone notices all these traces, because the vehicle is not designed to be detected. While it is defined as a medium tank, 
its armor does not exceed 100 mm, which is poor protection for these battle ratings. And 30 mm sights makes you vulnerable even to SPAAs. While many armor plates are angled, which helps with the ricochets, I wouldn't put too much hope into such events. At the same time, you will face many vehicles with even less survivability, so not being hull breakable is already nice. Tank's mobility is satisfying. The maximum speed is 65 kph, but just like most of the vehicles, it can only be reached on roads. Off-road, you won't exceed 50, but at the same time, acceleration is good and even when going uphill in sand or snow, you will be able to maintain reasonable speed. Reverse is one of the best among tanks of similar battle rating, 23 kph. Whenever your gun gets broken or the gunner refuses to shoot, you can quickly retreat behind your allies. When there are no allies nearby, you have one launch of smoke grenades. By the time smoke settles, you can be quite far away from the dangerous area without even turning around. Out of more notable disadvantages, lack of stabilizer was the biggest drawback, especially since AMX-30 1972. is a fast vehicle which usually flanks so spends significantly more time on the move, driving around the map, than slower tanks. At the same time, the battle rating is quite high and you will play against tanks with stabilized weapons quite often, especially when overtiered. In arcade, you will finally be able to take advantage of big maximum speed. Unfortunately, there is not that much flanking in the game mode where opponents can see your name tag across the whole map, so most of the fights will be stationary, each team will be defending their positions while hiding behind cover. And that's a disadvantage for anyone using EE shells. Since you won't get to choose where to shoot, turret will often be the only part you can hit, making it impossible to knock out opponent's driver. One shot in such case will only happen if the ammo rack detonates or someone has already damaged that opponent before. Your 20mm auto cannon also won't be that useful, since high velocity rounds lose most of their penetration over distance and you will rarely have a chance to shoot opponent's sides. So be prepared to help your allies to get kills and have a lot of assists. At first glance, AMX-30 1972 is quite similar to other medium tanks in most of the nations. Similar armor, similar battle rating, similar heat projectiles, identical reload speed and so on. Though if I had to choose, a tank with 20mm autocannon is a clear winner. It's not only additional way to deal damage to light or even medium tanks, but also can be used defensively to destroy opponent's gun if you missed a shot or that heat shell of yours made no meaningful damage. Again. That's why I would rate this vehicle 7 air traffic control towers out of 10. With other tanks, there are so many moments when you are standing in the open with broken gun unable to help yourself and just waiting until opponent finishes your suffering, while AMX-30 1972 can effectively disable opponent, repair and end up victorious in a situation when other vehicles would have no chance.